Hey guys, welcome back to JK Fishing. Today, as promised, we're going to show you how to replace uh, the trim tilt engine wiring harness uh, on this Yamaha 150 two stroke outboard that we've got on the back of our Sea Hump boat. Um, this model is a, a Z150 uh, TXRB. Um, a lot of them are very similar, so um, it's probably the same process on a lot of the similar age and model of, of motor. So uh, we're going to get the cowling off the motor. I'll show you where the problem is. We'll explain a bit more later and then we'll get on to the fix. Okay, so we got the cowling off the motor now and uh, I'm going to explain what our, our problem's been uh, since we bought this boat actually and it's been getting progressively worse where uh, this wire here or, or uh, harness full, full of wires, it's about 10 small wires inside of this casing. Um, it's I believe it's broken inside somewhere so when we would be starting up the motor sometimes we had to lift the wire and it's uh, probably not something that you want to do regularly but sometimes that would help us to get the motor started this wire bundle actually contains wires that manage the the trim and tilt uh, of the motor as well as the ignition I believe so uh, we narrowed it down to this wire being the problem in the bundle that was causing our, our boat not to to start all the time and so um, we order a new one on uh, online. We will put the link to that um, to that item in the description. Uh, you'll see the wire goes in through along with the rest of the bundle. It's clamped down here with a couple bolts that we'll remove, and then it connects inside here to uh, to the other wire that then distributes throughout the motor where it needs to go. So uh, we're going to disconnect this. We're going to take out the bolts here and show you how the wire is going to come out. And then um, we're going to replace this wire and uh, we'll show you under the center console exactly how this, this wire is going to be uh, connected to the rest of the uh, electrical system. Okay, so we're going to disconnect the wire here. Um, comes apart pretty, uh, pretty easily here. You'll notice we have to twist this uh, sleeve which connects the two and holds it in place. And then I'm going to disconnect the wire. You'll see there's the 10 pins in there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, take out this plate, which is holding the wires all in place. Um, there's a bundle of wires here for the controlling the speed and uh, the fuel and uh, oil and a number of other things. So we're going to be careful with these wires that we don't damage any. Um, and then we'll take out the one that is the the culprit here with our problems of starting the the engine so there's three bolts here that hold this down um, there's two holding the main plate and there's one holding the smaller plate down it's about a 10 millimeter socket there so the first one comes out quite easily the second one is kind of between the two we'll pull that one out too Okay, and then um, normally we could pull this whole thing out. Our rubber is actually broken here, this piece, which is fine. But now you'll see how easily the wire comes out. And we'll keep those there. Um, this is the wire that we need to replace. And uh, we'll have to fish it through. Okay, so here we are inside the center console. And you'll see the wire harness that comes into uh, the, the center console and connects to all the wiring here. Um, there's a number of different colors of wires here. Um, I'm going to make sure to take a picture of all this and how it's connected before I start to disconnect it. Of course, it's pretty simple. Uh, plug right here uh, has uh, a handful of wires going in. What they've done here with the brown wires, um, I'm going to try and do the exact same thing. It connects into the remote control, these two wires. Um, I think it has something to do with uh, preventing the start if uh, if you're neutral. I'm not sure though, but I'll just replicate that the same. And then, um, uh, as you saw in our previous video, we replaced the uh, trim tilt switch on the remote control. These are the wires here, and they actually come in and bundle in with this whole wiring harness. So, should be a pretty simple fix. Disconnect the wires, um, and then uh, connect the new one once we pull it up through. Uh, the hole here and uh, we'll be ready to go So as you'll see here um, The previous wiring job actually has these little bullet connectors For a lot of the connections here uh, between wires. You'll see it here on the the brown wire 
You're also going to see it on the trim tilt switch wires. Um, I want to leverage these. I want to use these again so that I can quickly disconnect where I want. However, I don't have any new ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to splice the wires off. Um, and I'm going to reuse the, the, the connectors here and just splice the wire onto the new one uh, with some straight inline connectors that I've got. So um, I'm going to cut the wires now and uh, it'll let me reuse these nice easy bullet connectors. Okay, so there you have it. We've got the old wiring harness completely pulled out from the boat. We've got a fish line that we pulled, the yellow nylon rope that we pulled through all the way to the uh, center console here. So we're all set right now to connect the, the, the rope here to the new wire, which I'm gonna show you what we bought here. So this brand new wire costs us about $90. Um, in the end, hoping this is like a half hour to one hour job at most. So um, hoping this gets our boat running. Okay, so I've successfully disconnected the wiring harness from the motor and I've fished it through where all the wires are going in uh, to the battery box that I have here. And I pulled the wire through. Um, which then is actually going to travel underneath the boat all the way into the center console. Uh, we'll take a look at that next. But first what I'm doing here before I fish this wire through is I've tied a rope to it so that I can easily pull the new rope all the way through versus having to take this whole panel off the bottom of the boat to put the wire through. So hopefully this works easily um, as I pull the wire through into the center console. Uh, the, the rope should come with it and uh, I'll be able to tie the rope on and pull the new wire through and get it all connected. Okay guys, so um, I've been successful at fishing this wire, the new uh, wire all the way through under the inside the boat from the center console. I'm ready to hook it up. That's the next step. Um, I'm hoping this wire is long enough. It looks like we're going to be just just long enough um, probably would have got a longer wire if I knew I was going to be this short but uh, nonetheless it's going to reach and we're going to test it out make sure everything's working okay so one thing I noticed about this um, this new uh, harness that I've got here is um, instead of having separate connectors going to the trim tilt switch right here um, as well as the brown wires, which is, uh, again, going to the remote control box. Um, they're all bundled into this connector here. Um, and I didn't find another um, uh, adapter coupler that would connect to it um, online. Um, I think they have them. I, I found it afterwards, but I, I figure I can do uh, the same thing here by making direct connections to the right colored wires. Okay, so... Um, I've taken off the other coupler because I don't have the right connector for that to connect into my remote control box. I think it must be for a newer version. So I'm going to do these direct connections. Now, one thing I noticed is I have an extra black wire uh, coming out that was connected to that, um, that coupler there. Um, I don't think I'm going to need this because I did not have this wire in my previous uh, harness. Um, there is a black wire coming up that goes to the main connection or coupler here and um, then it splices off and goes to what I believe would be the plug for the remote control box but um, I'm going to cover this one off um, so that it, I'm not going to cut it out or anything but I'll just tie uh, cover it up with some tape and then I'll get these other connections in place and uh, I think that should be good. Um, we were successful yesterday in replacing the trim tilt uh, engine wiring harness that we were having trouble with uh, in the past to get the motor started. Once we finished getting the wire in installed though, um, we attempted to start the motor and we didn't get a response. So I was a little bit concerned that we did something wrong. Um, spent a bit of time troubleshooting, but eventually realized that uh, there was a fuse that was blown uh, that we replaced within the, um, the fuse panel here on the motor. And that fuse was actually for the uh, the trim tilt fuse that was a uh, uh, needed to be replaced. So once we had that done, um, we started to see that we could trim and tilt uh, the motor uh, from the the remote control on the center console. 
Um, however, we still couldn't get the boat to start, so or the, mo the motor to start. So uh, we're continuing to troubleshoot today. Uh, we looked at a few videos online to see what that could be. We are hearing some sound coming to the motor, so um, we're confident that the wiring is good. It may be something with the starter or the starter relay. Um, or potentially with the battery. So we're charging the battery up today, making sure we have a, a lot of juice here, and we're gonna slowly eliminate some of the other potential problems that it is. Um, after spending a bit of time troubleshooting, we, we found the problem. We've actually solved for it, so I'm gonna walk you guys through my uh, troubleshooting approach for figuring out what was wrong with the startup of the motor. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, you know, we replaced the wire right here, the cable, which can, connects from the center console, remote control, um, shifter, as well as the um, ignition and, and the trim tilt switch. So this wire was our original project and we decided that um, we needed to replace it. When we replaced it, we realized that there was power getting here, um, but uh, we had a problem, the tr trim tilt wasn't working. So we checked inside the fuse box, fuse panel here, and we replaced one of the fuses, which was burnt for the trim tilt, coming from the, the remote control lever. Um, after that, we started to hear, when we were uh, trying to start it up, we heard a, a click noise and a bit of a humming noise. And uh, we knew that power was getting here from the trim tilt was working. We knew the cable was good, um, but the starter wasn't turning over. So we have our starter up here. So it, I looked at a couple videos online. I saw other guys having problems with the motor not starting and uh, they were troubleshooting. So I took the voltmeter out. I checked that we had power at the starter. Um, I then check, checked that we had uh, power at the, um, the starter relay here, which you'll see is these two posts here. Um, which is all connected to the same cable that we just replaced. So as I was doing this, um, I tried to start it, still still no luck, but we knew the battery was good and we had power. Um, had my daughter up on the boat, was checking across these two posts with the voltmeter. And as she was trying to start it, I heard it try to go. And so I realized that um, that the, uh, there was the, that there was something wrong in this relay because as I was shorting it with the voltmeter, I was able to get the, the starter to, to almost turn over. So what I did is I looked for this part online. It was on back order. Um, it was gonna take me a couple weeks, so I was a bit frustrated, but um, was ready to order it. I thought I'd give it one more go, and what I saw a guy do was take a rubber-handled screwdriver, so something like this right here, okay? And uh, as my son was trying to start the motor, I shorted across the two, the two uh, posts here and saw a spark. It immediately started up and uh, now it starts every time without the screwdriver. So pretty happy about that. Something in this starter relay might have been seized from all the, the stress on it from the broken wire that we had. Uh, not sure, but super happy that it's working. Uh, we'll keep this screwdriver in the boat in case we have the same problem when we're out on the water and I'll likely replace the relay in the near future once we get that part in. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, you learned a bit about troubleshooting your motor on your own and uh, stay, t stay tuned to JK Fishing for more how-to videos, more fishing videos and make sure you subscribe.